Hello everyone. This is this is Nanda Kumar, and uh, I'm going to talk about a very interesting topic now. The topic is DEV 2.0. What is this DEV 2.0? It is basically having a tagline of implement to connect the world. What is this connecting the world all about? Is it connecting the world through an aircraft? No. Is it connecting the world through sea routes? No. Then what is this connect the world all about? What is that I am talking when I say implement to connect the world? It means connect the business world to boost economy. When you take any sort of business, connectivity is one thing which makes all business thrive in a successful manner. So by connecting these business world, the ultimate motto should be in boosting the economy of one's country. When you talk about economy, nowadays there is a lot of talk about growth of economy, growth of countries and all these things. So when I talk about economy, it, be it becomes highly important that I speak about the science of economy which is economics. When we say economics, there are a lot of definitions related to economics. The most common definition given for economics is based on prosperity of regions, which was first proposed by Adam Smith. A few other economists around the world are giving a definition based on demand and supply. We did a lot of research over a period of 12 years in different countries and we came out with a lot more factors related to economics. From that, we define economics as distribution of wealth to get rid of poverty collectively. Now you might wonder where distribution of wealth comes into picture when we talk about growth of an, growth of an economy or a country. What is this distribution of wealth? Is it just taking money from one individual and just giving it back to another individual? Not exactly. This distribution of wealth means splitting up of wealth based on whatever you achieve as part of business and business based economy. So when we talk all about economics, the ultimate thing which makes economics or which aids economics is a product. Without a product, there is no flow of money, let it be a product or service. So with this aspect, when we thought about what sort of product we need to bring to the market, we visited a lot of prospects or customers and we got their specifications. In the morning session, we saw about three decades of collecting requirements and also about REQ 2.0, which is the way which we at Gbox family collect requirements. So when you say requirements, obviously the first thing which comes into picture is specification. A lot of customers had a lot of specifications and one such specification which is very valid today is any application or an 
highly engineered software which is our ultimate goal should be enabled in a smartphone that too with today's era there are a lot of companies like you have android operating system from google you have the ios operating system from apple which is the brain child of the greatest ever technocrat arguably steve jobs and oh we have even windows by microsoft so we have excellent operating system to support applications in a smartphone so we thought why don't we have a set of framework which will support our application in a smartphone so that everybody in today's era will get benefited out of such an application with this motto we carried out our research and when we did that most of the prospects were more concerned about upstream and downstream integration as the major point in their business what is this upstream and downstream integration it is just simple to make it more simple it is just the flow of data or information from one level of the industrial chain to the next level in any industrial or business cycle the two extreme levels are the customer and the supplier the two extreme levels so what happens when there is a specification first let us see about upstream integration the customer what he does he will obviously have some data which he enters the same data when it traverses to different levels from customer to the trader and then to the manufacturer and then to the supplier what happens each time the data passes through different stages the data gets duplicated because each level the individuals associated with that level enter the data again to be more simple but what we did is we decided that this duplication should not happen why because when this duplication happens in data your whole efficiency of the application gets stalled the same is the case for downstream integration from supplier to customer the same thing happens so we thought we will do this and we will make our application free of duplicate data duplication through our efficient mathematical algorithms which will make the software react or respond to data duplication in a more efficient manner thereby reducing redundancy of data so when we collected all these specifications we also noted that customers or prospects are more specific about an efficient collaboration of their motives or their business principles with the software that they use this collaboration is possible only if there is a synchronous thought process from the company side as far as gathering requirements are concerned our team took more efforts in understanding this and we made sure that this collaboration which the consumer or the user wanted is there with our application so one of the major point which drives a business according to us 
and what we observed from the market was KPI. This is a term which most of you would have definitely heard about. KPI is Key Performance Indicator. These key performance indicators are really essential to drive any sort of business. So these key performance indicators are something which has to be embedded into an application to make sure that the application gives the consumer or the user the desired benefits. So when we talk about these key performance indicators, to expand it, we also need to talk about economic indicators. Since I'm talking about economics and I'm saying grow, growth of economy is one of the major uh, part in uh, a software or a product development, we should talk about economic indicators. What are those economic indicators? Economic indicators are basically quantitative measurements which will depend on how the business functions and where the business goes. It will tell the user or the customer if one decision is made quantitatively what is the effect or the ripple it creates on the final outcome as far as economic growth is concerned. So we wanted to include economic indicators also into our framework and when we thought about this for ascertaining any indicator quantitatively we need something called as data definitely. So when data is coming into picture obviously with the advent of different systems data has to be migrated. We saw in one of our sessions about three decades of requirements and in the previous session before this we, thought, we talked about three decades of implementation. So what is three decades? Three decades is around 30 years. So in, in these three decades when there is an implementation which has happened over a period of time obviously it means that a lot of systems would have come into picture different types of systems but the data remains the same or it gets increased so when migration of data happens from one system to another it becomes really important for anybody to make sure that these data are not lost so data migration becomes a big issue so this issue we decided that we should handle this issue in such a way that data migration from their existing system to our new system is not a big deal again this was done using a number of mathematical algorithms which we devised out of our research so when data migration happens obviously there is an issue which is really important to discuss which is security nowadays we are hearing about a lot of uh, events or happenings around the world one important thing which we notice on a regular basis is that companies and individuals are getting hacked so what it means like data is at risk in fact from one of the instances which I read over a, um, before a few days there was a leading supermarket chain which had its servers hacked because of that several thousands of credit card details were compromised why? the reason is 
lack of proper security wall in the application. So when the security issue is discussed, the only way to make sure the data is secure is closing all the doors. What is this closing all the doors? Nothing can enter, right? Here, obviously, people follow a certain standard for closing all the doors as far as security is concerned in data. But we at Gbox, we don't follow those standards. Instead, we set our own standards in making sure that security issues are dealt with in an efficient manner and simultaneously connectivity is enabled in a fantastic manner. So when we don't follow standards and we set standards, obviously we have to talk about this HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. When I talk about text and when I talk about transfer, obviously when a text is transferred, anybody can just hack it, right? So HTTP is more like a home with open doors. For example, if you are leaving your home open without locking anything, what happens? Somebody comes in, takes out all your belongings and runs out. HTTP is just like that as far as data is concerned. Then they added a yes and put it as HTTPS but it became like a home with open doors with compound secured. Now, seeing all these things, we decided that we should close all the doors. That is the only way. There is no other way. We have to close the doors to make it secure. But how do we do that? Closing all the doors through a series of algorithms which will encrypt the data in such a way that it is not stolen. This is the only possible way where we can have security as an efficient one. So with all these factors, we came out with an excellent framework called G-Frames. This is our framework which is going to close all the doors as far as security is concerned, which makes data highly secure and make it literally impossible to hack. Obviously, when data is secured, you might wonder how connectivity can be envisioned. Simultaneously, connectivity with protected data through different mathematical algorithms and a sort of logic is envisioned in our G-frames. This G-frames will end up in a safe collaboration which the consumers wanted as part of their business requirements. So when this safe collaboration happens and the framework comes out, obviously we need to know what is this framework all about. This framework G-Frames is a signal based multi-threaded web server which makes data search with different algorithms literally possible and literally feasible. I hope there are a lot of students here who would have studied about algorithms or signals and all these things. But again, when there is an algorithmic data search with a highly encrypted algorithm, it becomes really fantastic for any product to maintain its security. So in short, to, to explain what it is, it is no database, but it is a database. Now you might wonder, what is this no database, but database? It is not no SQL. Not no SQL, no database, but it is a database. It is something which you will come to know 
over a period of time. And this framework is working on a highly componentized architecture. When you talk componentized, if you people had seen the pre-placement talk, which I had presented in a few colleges and the same PPT is there in the website of our company. I would have talked about different components, building components. And even in one of the sessions in the morning, in fact in REQ 2.0, we talked about components. Component generator you would have seen. These components are business components and these business components are built using DE principles. What is this DE principles? Digital electronic principles. So business components using digital electronic principles which will help the framework to make sure that whatever the requirement is absolutely carried out in an efficient manner. It is basically a hosted flavor. It is an in-house flavor, which means that obviously the combination of algorithms which we used here is something which we ourselves designed and it's a multi-switch flavor, not a single switch flavor in which you have a unilateral type of transaction. Here, it is a multi-switch flavor which makes sure that you can probably go for multiple level transactions without compromising on your security and the efficiency. What is this componentized architecture? We have the several architectures, a set of architectures in fact. The first architecture let us say A1 is a function of different components C1, C2, C3 up to Cn, different components. It is one of the architecture. The second architecture A2 it is a function of different set of components either it may be components which have uh, been uh, included in architecture 1 will also be included in architecture 2 with some new components a set of uh, mix okay and A3 again it is like C1 another set of components so what it means is reusability of components in defining different modules which makes you are programming even more efficient because you are programming for one component and the same component is reusable and it is loosely coupled so that you can reuse it with different scenarios. Likewise, we have Z number of architectures which is a function of C1, C2 up to Cn, any combination of our components where Z is a very large number, a very large number of components which we are designing and now there comes a very interesting point this Z is the reason why we have appended a Z at the end of our G box you might wonder what is the G box Z this Z is this this denotes that we are dealing with a large number of components in our software product so that became our brand, Gbox Z, and that is something which we are really proud of. Now, these, component, these components are comprised of different granules. Again, you can break those components into different granules. Maybe like a function of different granules will make a component. And these components, again, make sure that whatever requirement you have you can reuse those components to make the requirement satisfy now there comes delta management what is this delta management we talked about different components now when there is a requirement from the bus from the market these components are assembled in a way to make sure that those requirements are satisfied and here capturing the delta. What is delta? Delta is basically the difference. Difference or deviations in requirements. Identify the component, whatever component you would require, identify those components and upgrade the application 
with a newly built component which is identified. This is what we discussed in our process as sell and build, capturing the requirements and coding for the additional requirements, knowing the deviations. The same thing which we discussed in our pre-placement talk, this is the one. So coming back to this KPIs, again when I talk about KPIs, again there should be a lot of components designed to make sure that these KPIs are built and managed in an efficient manner. So obviously these KPIs are basically performance indicators which will help the company or the customer to do a statistical analysis of how their business functions so that they will know where they have to improve and where they have to have more concentration. It is basically having a set of feed forward controllers. The electrical and electronic students here would have learnt about feedback controllers in your control systems paper. Likewise this architecture has a few feed forward controllers, decision attributes and a lot of logical attributes which makes different logics being converted into a set of components which will again combine into a module to become a successful product. So obviously these things are concentrated on different things again you would have seen about trade who are the traders? Traders are people who are like a, a shop owner, a pharmacy maybe a flower boutique, a cloth merchant, a brick merchant, everybody is a trader. This again you would have seen in the first session, there is three decades of capturing requirements. Again you would have seen about manufacturing. There are a lot of manufacturing firms in today's world. When you talk about manufacturing, there is a lot of manual process involved in manufacturing. But these manual processes have now become automated and as far as manufacturing units are concerned, a lot of transactions take place. These transactions have to be handled through an engineered software and service. Service industries, people you meet on a daily basis like doctors, lawyers, advocate, I mean um, hospitals, hotels, auditors everybody constitutes a service industry and these people can also get benefited by such a high-end software okay these three things you would have seen in our morning session now I am going to introduce one more target in fact which is the most important home why home comes into picture here? Again, home is the place where economics starts. When I talk about economics, if I leave out home, then obviously I am not doing justice to my intent towards a good economy. Economics is derived from two different words, ecos and nomos, which means household laws. So the whole concept of economics itself has started from home. So economics is basically a reflection of home and that's the reason why we decided we should also have home as one of the sectors where we design our software applications. So with all these ideas we carried out a lot of demonstrations across the globe. Experts from different industries in India, USA, UK, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Australia and many more countries, they quipped that your idea is either revolutionized or impossible. Why? Because we are having our own set of algorithms 
we proclaim that or we say that with confidence we set our own standards so with that it has to be revolutionized according to us it cannot be impossible because our research has come out with several factors which proves that this revolution can really be envisioned this revolution which i am talking about absolutely has a meaning only when i have a competent workforce who will make my product and make my ambitions make the company's ambitions grow to a greater height so this revolution has a meaning only if there is a team which will obviously understand the various specifications of the customers and build those components with a highly algorithmic algorithmic architecture which will serve the purpose of bringing out a software product which will change the way software industry functions so do you want to join this revolution obviously see there is no point in saying that the career is not growing in a way where you are liking it depends on how people take the career as when there is a revolution and when there is a career option obviously the most intelligent option is to go with the revolution and make sure that your ideas are part of such a revolution all the concepts which i discuss now algorithms mathematics controllers digital electronics everything is a part of the curriculum of each and every college and correcting requirements knowing the deviations everything is the part and parcel of any mba syllabus so when you want you yourself to become an analyst and when you want your career to grow in an exponential manner obviously you have to take the route of a revolution so in short you have to be innovators rather than followers so th with this motto i hope that each and every individual student who is present here wants to be identified as a revolutionary as far as their career is concerned if that is going to be the case obviously you need to join our revolution and make sure that you come inside a process where you will learn a lot of things you can implement several ideas which are really revolutionary and make sure that you people are benefited by a highly efficient career so that thank you have a nice day